that of Fios One News special, it is one man's battle with the city of Newark and it's over mold. The man thought he'd finally get to become a homeowner thanks to a special program from the city. Instead, it turned into a nightmare after he discovered mold in the basement of the home. Files One's Giovanna Durpik investigates and joins us with her special report. Giovanna. Mike Courtney, Freddie Ballester jumped at the offer, a chance to buy a house for his family with the help of the city of Newark. He believed it had to be a good deal since the city was involved. Instead, he learned a tough lesson. Buyer beware, no matter who the seller is. Look at these mounds of mold that have built up over the years. Zero in on the rot that's eaten away at this wood. Now, imagine if this were your basement. Well, this is the basement of Freddie Ballester's home. So it's a dream come true. They had a billboard up for first time home buyers. They had a big ceremony out here, like they're helping us low income people. That's what Ballister, a single father of three, thought when the city of Newark made him and nearly a dozen other residents an offer that sounded just too good to pass up. They could become first time homeowners. If they qualified, they'd get to buy a house on 3rd Street with a $22,000 break in the price. They'd just have to stay in the house for 10 years. Not even a year, six months, I go to the basement and I start seeing all this mold. And that's what started Ballester's nearly 11-year battle with Newark to try to get action taken. Ballester's 14-year-old son, Jonathan, remembers watching his father struggle to get someone to help. On his days off, he would, like, drop me off um, at school and then go to um, City Hall and stuff to, to go talk to the people. And... Ballester just wanted Newark to remove the mold from the home he says the city enticed him to buy. So just how bad was the mold? Look at what tests commissioned by the city of Newark back in 2008 showed. Just outside Ballester's house, lab results showed a mold spore count of 279 spores per cubic meter. On the first floor, it jumped to 21,200 spores per cubic meter. And in the basement, there we go. the measurement skyrocketed to 84,400 spores per cubic meter. For context, a mold specialist we consulted said, generally speaking, the spore count outside should be about the same inside. Ballister worried about what all of this could mean for his family. When I was younger, I would always have like problems breathing and stuff and I would like get a lot of headaches. There's no proof this mold caused Jonathan's health issues, but Ballister knew it had to get fixed. So he appealed to anyone and everyone at Newark City Hall who would listen. This paperwork is years and years of lies, all broken promises. I have so much paperwork that it pretty much shows every councilman, every mayor, and all the stuff they told us that they were going to do. 11 years, four mayors, piles of correspondence, and assurances from various leaders in Newark the city would step up and remove the mold. Of that effort, the city has directed its consultant, Birdsell Engineering, to inspect the interiors of all the impacted units in order to prepare and refine a detailed scope of work, identifying the remediation work that must be performed in order to correct these problems. So they're acknowledging right there that there is a problem. And, oh, they pretty, they, from day one, they didn't deny it. Even Newark's Department of Housing Authority, or DHA, acknowledged Ballester's house and all of the other houses offered as part of this deal on 3rd Street had mold. So the DHA calculated how much money was needed to do the job. And that was back in 2006. The DHA identified $327,271 to complete all work that must be done in 3rd Street homeowner homes. But nothing ever happened. So Fios One News got involved. We needed to see how bad the mold was. We consulted with a health and safety manager who told us that we should not go down into that basement without some specific items for protection. So we suited up by putting on a safety mask, then goggles, a protective hood, and finally gloves. We were ready to get a first-hand look at the mold. I can smell it. Look at your door. And we have masks on. And you see all the beams are just coming through. All of them. Look, at this is all mold that the city of Newark sold us this. Practically everywhere we looked, from the ceiling to the walls to the floors of the basement, we saw mold 
or the cumulative effects of years of mold on the structure and on balusters' belongings. I can't use none of these stuff. Now, I spoke with the lab technician, and she remembered this, even though this was seven years ago. She remembered the case. She called it one of the worst ever, ever, ever. Those were her exact words back then. And this is still Ballister's reality today. That lab technician did not want to go on camera for this piece, but we weren't satisfied. I thank you, Giovanna, for doing this for us. At least somebody cares. We found not only someone who specializes in analyzing mold, but also a home inspector, both of whom agreed to take a look at the mold in Ballister's basement. We also tried repeatedly to get an interview with Newark's current mayor, Ross Baraka. Instead, we were granted an interview with the city's director of health, Dr. Hana Hamdi. After trying to get answers and a commitment from the city to take action to clean up the mold, the mayor's press secretary cut our interview short. Thank you. Will you go on the record and commit to doing something to help these residents? Mayor and in part two, find out what happened during our interview with Dr. Hana Hamdi, Newark's Director of Health and Community Wellness. Plus, we'll have the results of that inspection by Dr. Chin Yang, the mold specialist, and Simeo Alves, the certified home inspector. Mike, Courtney. Hey, Jim, thank you very much. And again, make sure to catch the conclusion of Not My Home Sweet Home series. That airs tomorrow night at 5 p.m. right here on Fios One News Now. Well, thanks, Joe. Now the battle over moldy homes in Newark heats up. It's a story Files One's Giovanna Durbeck brought you last night. Yeah, watch what happens as she takes the city to task for not following through on fixing a resident's decades-long mold issue. That's even though the city spearheaded the program that resulted in him buying the home with the mold several years ago. Giovanna joins us now with the latest. Hey, Giovanna. Mike, Vanessa. In the first part of our mold special, we introduced you to Freddie Ballister, a man who claims that the city of Newark sold him on buying a home 11 years ago whose basement was filled with mold. Well, tonight we share with you not only what city leaders have to say about the problem that still has not been addressed, but also what both a mold specialist and certified home inspector say about the overwhelming amount of mold in Ballister's basement. This is what happened when Fios One News pushed to get answers and action from the city of Newark regarding the mold problem with some homes on 3rd Street. Will you go on the record and commit to doing something to help these residents? Can we get some sort of commitment from you? We were fighting for a resolution for Freddie Ballister, who along with his neighbors had been battling what's been more than a decade-long mold problem in the basement of their homes. Their homes the city of Newark encouraged the residents to buy as part of a low-income home ownership program. It's, I don't wish this on, you know, my worst enemy. I don't want nobody to go through what I did. We sat down with the city's health director, Dr. Hana Hamdi, hoping to get assurance the mold would be removed once and for all. I showed Dr. Hamdi the lab results as well as other documents from previous administrations. That was previously done. A testing company went in there and tested for the mold, and this is what they came up with. Outside, the mold spore count was 279. Indoors in that basement, I can show you, 84,400. That's a huge difference. So I'm not sure what the um, document is from. I don't have any. This is what the city paid for. Again, um, the administration, we're committed to providing families in the event they do have issues. We go out and inspect, and we contract out to inspectors to remediate the mold. The city claims it was not aware of Ballister's situation, even though I contacted the city numerous times about it. So we asked Dr. Chin Yang, technical advisor and senior consulting scientist for Prestige Enviromicrobiology, to inspect Ballister's home. He has a doctoral degree in biology with a specialty in the study of mold. Well, this piece of wood, you can see these five fluffy growths. It's a very good possibility these are wood decay fungi. So this is causing the wood decay. So what about Newark's own commission test results? Specifically, the low mold spore count right outside Ballister's home and the astronomical count inside his basement. Uh, the theory is that the most spores inside a building should be similar to what's outside. 
unless there are water intrusion issue or condensation issue leading to active mold growth. And the result seems to indicate at that time that there was moisture issue and mold growth. Then we brought in Simeo Alves, a certified home inspector with 10 years of experience. If I could see a beam and I can shove a screwdriver through, that's pretty bad. But structurally, it might not be so sound. And check out this particle board. It's covered in so much mold that it looks like it could easily snap. We wanted Alves to give us his professional opinion on the soundness of the structure. That's definitely no good. I mean, once that goes, and the load basically transfers onto here, onto this structural wall. Despite some reinforcement work that the developer did many years ago on the compromised beams. I'd say probably about close to 50% of the joists are pretty rotted. Now, rewind to our interview with Dr. Hamdi. <laughs> Keep in mind, we interviewed her at the city's Healthy Children's Summit, a campaign specifically to promote healthy residents. This is what the press secretary who accompanied Dr. Hamdi said after we kept pressing for action. Giovanna, we, we actually, we're going to cut the interview at this point because clearly this is information that we can't verify and we haven't received. But I so, told you guys about I know, but you're a reporter, sweetie. You're a reporter. And this has to come from the residents in the city. I thought this was something that the city was alerted to. So even though the documents were from the city's previous administrations and leaders, and even though Ballister himself has contacted the city for nearly 11 years, that wasn't good enough. Ballister's children have grown, and still the mold in his house remains. His concern continues, especially after what the home inspector and mold specialist said. Would you be concerned for your family? Yes, that's why I said I, I will move my family away, relocate it. And I definitely highly recommend having a contractor come out here and repair this immediately before it's too late. Ballister hopes help arrives before it's too late, but he has learned a hard lesson. Before buying a house, you need to get an inspection, no matter who is selling it to you, and in this case, the city of Newark. They're not doing nothing for us. They just pretty much, they ruined our life because uh, this was a big investment for me. And now we just, you know, I'm stuck here. And Ballister says other Third Street homeowners just walked away from the homes. Now, if you're wondering why he didn't just sell the house after the 10-year period was up, he says no one would buy it unless the mold is removed. And it would never pass inspection, and he can't afford to do either. The city claims it's going to work with Ballister, so he's contacted them yet again. Well, we've been checking, and so far, no one from the city has either visited the property or taking any other concrete action. But of course, we're going to stay on top of this. Mike, Vanessa? Do something like you said before it's too late. Mm -hmm.